This is Logitech MX Creative Console, a two element device, as you can see, that can be used in various systems and applications to trigger specific actions to just speed up your workflow. For me, as a wedding photographer, I'm specifically looking into speeding up my workflow in Lightroom specifically in Lightroom Classic. So when I saw an announcement coming from Logitech, I was quite excited and I went and pre-ordered this thing. And then after first two sessions with it, so I edited a bunch of wedding photos, then I edited like a photo shoot. I was quite unsure how it's actually gonna work for me because so far I've been using this monogram console and I had my workflow with it and it seems faster than the Logitech until I actually set it up in a completely different way Way, I changed the entire setup on the Logitech using one very special feature of this thing. So in this video, I'm going to give you the overview of the entire device. Then I'm going to jump straight into Lightroom and show you two different setups, workflows for this device in Lightroom. If you're new around here, my name is Magic. I'm a destination wedding photographer. I've been doing this YouTube channel for over three years now, sharing my knowledge about shooting weddings, using lenses, cameras, gear, combination of tech nerdy stuff and wedding photography. And this particular product, the console, is, is the first product of its type made by Logitech. But, but I do believe it is just a beginning of the series because uh, last year Logitech purchased the company called LubeDeck. LubeDeck, very popular console maker among wedding photographers. They had like a bunch of these LubeDeck devices. I have personally used the first two LubeDeck devices, like the big, like kind of a keyboard consoles, but I've never quite liked them. They were like too plasticky to me and the knobs weren't as responsive as I wanted them to be. So it, it, it just didn't work for me. And I ended up getting the monogram console, which was like way superior than like the, my experience with Loop Deck. But among many of my friends, the newer Loop Deck CT, which is console more similar to this Logitech's one, got many positive reviews. But to be honest, I'm not sure what's the future of Loop Deck because many of these friends said that after the acquisition of the loop deck by Logitech, the support is not as good as it used to be and the new updates are, they, they suck. They simply suck. So it might be the end of the loop deck as we know it and the beginning of the transition to this like Amex creative series. Who knows? Who knows? But that's what I'm at least thinking. This console is quite well made. You know, it's it's a plasticky console, but it's like it's a similar like made to like other Logitech devices, which I'm personally using. In the box itself, you get two console units, one stand, USB-C cable and a three months of Adobe subscription that you can redeem later on. So the Logitech is working quite closely with Adobe. And also there's like a bunch of like ready made software profiles for it as well. But among these two kind of Units. The first unit, it's called MX Creative Keypad. It connects via cable to your computer. It has nine customizable main buttons with the screen underneath. So the screen changes the icon that you can customize in the software. And then you have these two non-customizable arrow keys to change like the pages of the layout. So you can customize more than nine, but on the other pages and you can just change from one to another. The second console is called MX Creative Dial Pad and it connects via Bluetooth. It has on and off switch. It can connect to three different devices and switch between them simultaneously as like similarly to other Logitech MX devices. You have this button underneath and you switch between one, two and three. To my surprise, there is no USB-C port on this console and it is powered by two AAA batteries on the back here. And that's weird. Like, that's very weird. I'm quite surprised. I thought this is going to be rechargeable as any other, you know, like Logitech devices like mouses or keyboards, but it's not. It takes the batteries. So I'm unsure how I feel about this. That's that's weird for me. But yeah, it is what it is, I guess. They say it's going to take months until you kill the batteries. So at least you're not going to change them that often. On the front of this console, you have this huge knob. You have four customizable buttons and one like kind of this roller for scrolling type of actions. The color I have of this set is the graphite color and it's exactly the same. It's matching the color of my keyboard and my mouse. To set it up, you need to use the Logi Options Plus 
app. And for me, this is where the fun begins because I feel that there is so many options there. So the device can be set to trigger custom functions from your system, from different applications, keyboard shortcuts, and all that fun stuff that I'm not going to talk about in this video. Because I'm going to focus specifically on a Lightroom classic workflow. So let's start with my first, the first workflow, the first kind of obvious editing workflow that I found for this device. Okay, so for the first one, what I'm doing is I'm assigning the most popular sliders, like the most used sliders that I have to, you know, the, the keypad. So for me, it's exposure, temperature, and tint. That's the three that I'm going to use mostly. Then I have contrast, highlights, and shadows. Then I have a custom button for paste the settings from my, my previous image. So because I'm editing images one by one, usually I have like multiple different photos in one scene that are quite similar. So I usually apply the edits from the previous image to the next image if they're similar. So I'm going to use that. And then I have applying my presets, Magic Adabra color presets, and my black and white main preset. My Magic Adabra preset pack comes with like a full editing course. You can check it out in the description if you're interested and if you enjoy the colors that I'm going to use in this video. So that's the keypad. So nine features of the keypad. And then on the dial pad, I have these two buttons set for the next image and the previous image. So I'm just kind of going through the images with these two keypads. And then the main one is it's what it's called, it's contextual. So it's changing which, whichever feature I have right here. So I'm applying the preset with the button, then I'm gonna click on temperature. I'm gonna lower the temperature, make the image slightly less warm, and then I'm gonna use a slight adjustment of the exposure. So that's, that's how I would probably edit image like this. I might work on a tint a bit, make it slightly greener and that's it. You can see like the, the, the sensitivity of the big dial is amazing. Like it's great. It's very smooth and you can see how many steps, like it's going steps by five. So I'm just slightly turning it and just changing my sliders very slightly. But here is what is problematic. If I want to do any type of cropping, uh, um, of course, I can assign, I used to have assigned the button here for cropping, but there's no way I can, I can use the cropping in a way that it's going to make it quick because I can assign the knob to change the rotation of the crop and I can assign the buttons to go, you know, up and down, but it's going to take always much way more time than if I'm going to do it like quickly like this, for example. Right. So I will always have to edit like this using the keypad and then go back to the mouse. You can see my actual video of me editing like this right here. So this is like th this. This is how I edited the entire like a bunch of wedding photos and a photo shoot. You can see my hand is constantly going over mouse. And this is something that I felt is not speeding up my workflow. So like while this is fun and I can use it and it works, it's it's not making me edit my images faster. The second limitation I found is that you have to have your you, you know, you have to press the button for each feature that you're changing. Um, so you're changing click, you're changing, click, you're changing, right? There is no way you can make it quicker than, than this if you want to change the adjustments. For example, when I was using my monogram console, I had a different dials for different things. So I was exposure, temperature, tint on different, you know, knobs. So I could do it simultaneously. I can do two, three things simultaneously, which I couldn't do on this MX console. So I was kind of ready to send it back. I was like, okay, it's cool. I think it's it, it's great for someone who's using just a mouse and keyboard. This might just add, you know, but for me having already a setup, like this is just useless. But I decided to give it one more chance and I decided to use a completely different setup for this tool and this time I decided to do it like this. So look at this. I decided to go for this type of setup and a mouse. So a hand on a mouse and one hand on the console. And now I'm going to show you how I use different setup using Logitech feature called 
action ring. But let me first tell you about the biggest change in my editing workflow and like the biggest boost in the speed of my editing, which is using AI to learn how I edit my photos and edit these photos for me in like literally no time. And that is with Imagine, the sponsor of this portion of the video. If you look at this clip of me editing my photos with the Logitech console, you might notice, wait, these images are almost perfect. Like there's no need for much editing. And that 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 is actually true because they already went through Imagine. And what I'm doing is just like giving my final touches and tweaks on the images. I'm not doing the entire edit from scratch. If you're not familiar with Imagine, the way it works is that you first create a profile using your Lightroom edit. So you teach Imagine how you edit your photos. My personal profile is based on over 15,000 edited images. And then you send your Lightroom catalog via Imagine app for editing. You select which images, which collections you want to edit. You select if you want to crop, straighten or add a mask to your images. I personally crop and straighten my images and then you click go and for around 1000 images it takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes to have your images back in your Lightroom edited. So when it's done you load your photos in the Lightroom and look at this that's my favorite part you can literally see them changing in Lightroom when you load the edits that's that's the best. I personally will still go through each image to tweak and make final edits but as you can see here the most of them are pretty much done so it will take me much less time than editing my images from scratch. It's literally a game changer. If you have never tried this, make sure to use the link in my description. You will get 1500 free edits and I promise you it's gonna change your life. Okay, let me show you now my workflow with the actions ring. So the Logi Option Plus software allows you to set up this feature called action ring. By default is set to this button, but you can obviously change it in, like later on. And what it does, it shows this ring of features wherever your mouse is. So wherever your mouse is, you click on this, it's gonna pop up this little pop-up menu of features and you simply hover your mouse over that specific feature and use your dial to change it. So now what I did, I set up all of my most used sliders to the actions and now I use my left hand on the dial pad and right hand on the mouse. So I'm no longer switching from keypad to the mouse because I'm not using the keypad with my right hand. I'm using the action button. So now look at this. I'm gonna load up my preset and then I'm gonna press the quick action button and you can see these are my all most used features. So that's exposure, temperature, and I just simply hover over temperature and lower it with the knob. I hover over the exposure, I change the exposure, I can change the tint, and I feel this is kind of much faster. And here I have the crop, which I can just simply click on change the crop, apply the crop with this button. That's what I set up to apply the crop. Boom, the crop is applied. And I feel like this is way faster. I feel like still that's not my final setup. I set up like the masking button here to check out how I can work with that. And that works actually great too. So here I press on a mask and I have custom buttons for linear or radial mask. So I can do radial and then I can use my mouse to add it and make a knob to adjust the exposure or use the action button to adjust different sliders for the mask. And then I apply the mask, I'm done. So I feel like that masking, I'll probably put it somewhere here because now I'm not using any of these buttons, but that's still work in progress. I edited the entire thing, the entire shoot with this workflow. I will post this video actually on the channel. It's gonna be like me no talking, just simply editing so you can see how I use it. And I, I feel like this is going to be really great. And this way, I feel like this was superior to using monogram. Because with monogram, I still had to use a mouse from time to time to do the masking and stuff. So I was going back and forth with my right hand as well. But with this setup, it's like I'm not moving my hands at all. One is on the mouse, one is on the MX Creative Console. So after implementing this workflow with Action Ring feature, I changed my mind about this device. I was like, okay, I might keep it because like it feels like I can be faster with this than I am with any other devices. And I feel that's thanks to the customization of the Logitech features, like the Logitech Options Plus app is actually 
really powerful here. And I'm not touching any of the features that this device can bring you like system wise, you know, to, you know, running the apps, running the script. So I feel like there's so much more potential than just editing. Feel free to drop any questions as I, I think I'm going to be making a follow up in a few months after I finalize my workflow with it. I might share the workflow with you guys. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this and I see you in the very next video. Bye.